Hello. Today I'm going to be showing you my impression for a medic in H Company, 3rd Battalion, 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division. Now, just before we get started, um, I'd just like to say I by no means am saying I have a full kit. This is just the stuff that I have right now that I use for reenacting. Um, it's not a perfect impression. Just, yeah, thought I'd just mention that before getting the video, but yeah, enjoy. So, going from top to bottom, first I have my M1 helmet. Uh, this is the US Paratrooper helmet. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know, uh, before D-Day, uh, paratroopers in the 101st Airborne Division were given markings to paint on their helmets to identify which unit they're in. So if someone comes across them, they'd know which unit they belong to. The 101st Airborne Division was organized into several infantry regiments, so three parachute infantry regiments and one glider infantry regiment, as well as some other subunits that we'll talk about. So um, first was the 501st Parachute Infantry Regiment. Um, this was denoted by a white diamond on the helmet. Uh, then there was the 502nd, uh, which had a white heart on the helmet. Uh, then the 506th, which had the spade. Um, and then there was the Glider Infantry Regiment, the 327th. They had a club on the helmet. And a couple subunits would be the 326th Engineer Battalion, which had an E. And um, the 326th Airborne Medical Company, which had a white cross. Then you'll notice a small tick mark, hash mark, whatever you call it. Um, some units did this on D-Day. They were all used in Market Garden, but only some units did this on D-Day. Now, um, this was to identify which battalion a soldier was part of. Uh, so at the top, at the 12 o'clock position, would be the HQ company. Then here at 3 o'clock would be 1st Battalion, 6 o'clock, 2nd Battalion, and 9 o'clock, 3rd Battalion. Uh, now, I represent 3rd Battalion, however, I have my tick mark, hash mark, uh, at um, 3 o'clock for 1st Battalion. This was because before D-Day, um, there was a mix-up for soldiers in 1st and 3rd Battalion, and they got their sides mixed up, so you see many soldiers in 3rd Battalion have their tick marks in the place of 1st Battalion. Uh, so, to avoid confusion, soldiers in 3rd Battalion were told to add a white dot at the front and back of their helmet to identify them easier. Uh, next, moving down, I have my uh, reinforced M42 jump uniform. This was the standard uniform given to US paratroopers up until late 1944, where they started switching into the M43. So you'll notice this uniform is quite dark and waxy, with some white spots around it. This is the CC2 treatment. So uh, uniforms before D-Day would have been impregnated with a CC2 treatment. Uh, which sealed off the uniform. It was an anti-gas treatment. Uh, it stops gas from seeping through the uniform and irritating your skin. It's o often overlooked by reenactors, but all uniforms would have been CC2 for Normandy, uh, with very, very few exceptions. Uh, underneath my M42 jump jacket, I have my M37 wool shirt. Uh, next, I have my patch and armband. So this is the 101st Airborne patch. Then I have my medic armband. It's buttoned at, uh, around the bottom here. This is an original medic armband from the 326th uh, Airborne Medical Company. Uh, now moving on to my webbing, my web gear, field gear, whatever you want to call it. So first, you'll notice I have this GP bag. This is a general purpose M1 ammunition bag. Now going back to my role, I'm a medic. Uh, all medics would have been issued with a medic harness, which consisted of yoke suspenders, and two medic bags. However, airborne medics found these harnesses too cumbersome to wear when jumping out of an airplane, so they just used one bag on a GP strap or litter strap or any sort of strap they could find, in, or in my particular case, as a medic. Before D-Day, um, I did a trade with another guy who had a GP bag. I figured that the GP bag could carry more stuff than the medic bag could, so I could have some of my personal equipment in there as well. So I did a quick trade with another paratrooper before D-Day, and that's how I acquired this GP bag instead. Next uh, is um, my M36 pistol belt. I have my M36 suspenders. Um, these, are, these have felt pads on them, 
These were used by paratroopers to help um, distribute the weight more on their shoulders, makes it more comfortable, although it is a real pain putting on. Next, I mentioned the musette bag. So this is where you'll keep most of your gear in. This is all your personal items. Uh, you will probably have a raincoat in there, halazone tablets, your wash kit, uh, cade ration. Many people say that have uh, three sets of cade rations because paratroopers were expected to survive three days um, behind enemy lines. This is utter nonsense because uh, no one's going to have a place to carry three sets of cade rations because that's nine boxes. And you'll have to take out a bunch of stuff to put those in. So paratroopers would have just carried one box. So jump rope, let down rope, whatever you want to call it, uh, given to paratroopers in case they get stuck in trees. Um, some of them kept them because they could come in useful. Some of them couldn't be bothered to get rid of them. Others would have just dumped them. And this is, since this is D-Day plus one or two, then bye-bye jump rope. Right, uh, next moving along here, I have a rigger pouch. Uh, so this is an ammunition pouch made by the riggers. Uh, the riggers were the guys we mentioned earlier who reinforced these pockets. Uh, they made these special pouches for paratroopers to carry ammunition. In this case, this is where I have my two fragmentation grenades. Next, moving along, I have an M1910 entrenching tool cover uh, with not an M1910 entrenching tool because it's missing the iconic T-handle there. Um, yeah, I haven't got around to getting one of those yet. This is just one I've painted olive drab. Next. Uh, around here, I have two canteen covers. Uh, so this is, these are canteen covers. Medics would have had two because they'd have to carry water for themselves and water for wounded soldiers. And uh, next here, I have my um, Carlisle pouch, Carlisle bandage pouch um, with a parachute first aid packet. It's basically my personal me medical equipment if I get hit. Um, this has a Carlisle box inside of it. Some of them had tins, some of them just had boxes. I haven't got my hand in a tin yet. That is something I do look to get in the future. Um, then I have a M8 scabbard. Uh, finally, I have my uh, second parachute first aid packet. As a medic, I've been scrounging around for as many medical supplies as I can, so I managed to get in the second one. So this is the second one. Uh, a note, this is a transitional one. It's also homemade, which is why it looks odd. Um, and then down the bottom, I have my uh, paratrooper jump boots. Here you can see I have my kit laid out. So this is my um, equipment layout, basically. All the stuff I'd be carrying with me, not my uniform, of course, because I'm wearing that. Um, but that's all my equipment. What paratroopers would have taken to Normandy with them. So starting over here, it's my webbing, uh, as I mentioned before, it's the box from the first aid pouch. Now you'll notice um, my suspenders, uh, the two straps there, one of them is not clipped onto the belt because those would clip onto the D-rings of my musette bag. There. And that brings us to my musette bag. So here I have my musette bag of some of the stuff I'll carry inside it. Uh, first, here you have the poncho that was sticking out. Um, I know I said poncho, not raincoat. I will get around to getting a raincoat soon, but for now I have a poncho because it's the only thing I could get, and it also doubles uh, for US Marine Corps as well. And the musette bag itself, of course. Some wool gloves, K ration box that has been absolutely battered. And my extremely faded gloves. Uh, then my medic armband, of course. Blasting caps for explosives, that's because I'm in 3rd Battalion. Um, they had the engineers and all sorts of demolition squads and stuff attached to them, so I'm just carrying that for one of the guys in there who got too much to carry already. Uh, toilet paper, Waldorf. I think it's original, I'm not sure. Um, Halazone tablets. They're water purification tablets, basically. Those are homemade. Uh, next I have eye goggles, a spoon, a packet of charms, uh, basically sweets. Uh, then jeep cap and an hbt cap i wouldn't take both of them it's, i just laid them both here then i have personal items diary toiletries i have not got a toiletry set a bag i don't know what it's called Toilet, toiletry bag toiletry set 
I've not got one of those, but I've got, uh, I'll get around to getting one of those soon. Uh, but it's just like the raincoat, not very high on my priority list, because hardly anyone's going to see it. Um, and of course up there I've got my drop rope, jump rope, let down rope, whatever you want to call it. GP bag, uh, with bandages, uh, then some tweezers and scissors, scissors, scissors. And a couple of homemade morphine serrettes. So I gotta get around putting some labels onto them, but yeah. A lot of my stuff is homemade because original stuff is hard to find here. Repro stuff like morphine serrettes, I never heard of them before. Carlisle bandage pouch with the first aid tin inside. Uh, just sort of stuff a medic would carry, scrounge that up from the um, distribution office. Uh, now, the things we'll be missing from here are. Pack packets of sulfur powder, sulfidamide powder, uh, whatever you call it, and um, some wound tablets. Now, I will get around to making those soon, I just haven't yet. Um, then I have my garrison cap. Uh, with the soldiers wouldn't have jumped with these, they would have left them behind in their sea bags, uh, but I've just put it down there because why not? Um, so it's a garrison cap with the parachute infantry. A uh, light blue felt patch. It's got the pale blue infantry piping, not the medical piping, because, um, as I said, I am a medic, but I'm not part of a medical unit. Um, I'm just a medic part of an infantry unit, so I have the infantry piping and not the medical piping. Moving on from there, I have my helmet again with the original British style net, scrim, and last but not least, my canteen and canteen cup. So, that is my gear uh, on my kit layout right now. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned is the cricket, which I have here. Doesn't need much explaining. Basically, identification device given to 101st Airborne Division. Well, that is it for today's video. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them below. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.